bow with me for a prayer? Dear most precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. <clears throat> we thank you for your precious word that never changes. We thank you, Lord, for your changeless faithfulness to us and the covenant of your love. Bless us, O oh God, in this time we're living in to always honor you, to have peace in our heart and strengthen our love. Bless us, Lord, to be genuine in our fervent faith and help us, O oh Lord. We are weak and needy. We cry out to you, O oh God, to heal us, to bring us back to you, and to help us love you with all our heart, soul, mind, and spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I wanted to bring you out in the woods with me today. And, um, you know, on these meetings I'm doing like this on Wednesdays, uh, I've been in various locations. I really appreciate my wife being so uh, willing to come with me in places like this. Um, but also, I was thinking, I don't want you to think that, that uh, I'm showing off anything I have as far as property goes because gosh, I'm probably the poorest preacher in our denomination. I, I really have nothing. Um, and yet, when we can say that, I'm glad I don't, because if I did, I might get too big for my britches. Uh, this, this land uh, that I'm on is, I guess it's in my name, but it's really not mine, it's God's. And actually, it was given to me by my daddy, my father. My daddy worked hard. He worked two jobs to have a little farm, to have it paid for, and Actually, he planted the trees that you see in the background. I had nothing to do with it. All I did was be born to, to inherit it. Um, so, and I think that's how we all are. If you're really honest with yourself, everything you have is because of somebody else. Most of you, everything you have, somebody's given to you. Some of you have worked hard for it, but God has given you the ability to even do that. The intelligence, the uh, doors of opportunities that he's opened. Really, everything's God's, and uh, we need to appreciate that. Actually, when it comes to salvation, uh, eternal salvation, we had nothing to do with it, absolutely nothing. Uh, so we shouldn't kick and scream so much when God uh, deals with our lives in ways that we feel like are uncomfortable or that even hurt at times, because there's a lot of life that's heartbroken. You don't get to heaven without pain. That's why Jesus went to the cross. He suffered for us. The best thing we can appreciate, though, is the fact that Jesus died for our sins. And uh, that makes us the richest people in eternity. We'll live for him, with him forever in heaven. Well, anyway, I brought you out here. Uh, I hope you notice in the background is some woodland that has been burned. Fire. I did it. I did it. I was, as I said, a property owner, so... I did it because I wanted to and because I felt like it would improve the land. It would meet the objectives that I had, I had for this little small place of woods. That's the way God is in our life. We as believers are like trees. God says we're like trees of righteousness. God plants us and God also um, prunes us. He, uh, he deals with us in our life and after he saves us, he sanctifies us and brings us which is a process that God is shaping and molding us to be like the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, I wanted to talk about this and I wanted to do it out here because I wanted you to see this is a burning. Uh, these woods were burned. And you might say, well, why in the world would you burn your woods? And we might say to, to God even, though, though we won't directly say it, we would think, though, God, why are you letting me hurt like this? Why, God, are, are you allowing this pandemic to... Uh, run rampant in our world and your churches have been closed and your people have been sheltered and people are dying and sick uh, well god owns it all and so what god is doing i believe is a lot like what i did in this woods see i set the fire i, I there was a timing to it all and uh fire is very serious you don't fool around with fire you don't fool around with God either. You don't fool around with his word. God says his word is like a fire and like a hammer. That's how he describes it. Uh, but there's there's a warning here, but there's also hope because there's so much good that come out of this fire. Uh, I wish I'd had a before and after shot here for you, but uh, if I was in this same place and, and been filmed here before I burned it, it would look horrific. 
it would be full of briars and, and brambles and all kind of weeds. Uh, but that's cleaned up now. Why? Because of the fire. And I'm not going to say fire doesn't hurt. You know, if, if trees could talk, they would say, why in the world are you allowing this to happen? Why are you doing this? But, of course, trees don't, a, tree, a tree doesn't have uh, uh, feelings. But, but that's what happens. We might say, God, why are you allowing this to happen? But God, see, has a perspective that we don't have. See, he, he's always doing something for our good. Now, we might not understand it. I wanted to read you some scriptures because God, not only is he a, a fire, he is a living fire. The Bible says that. But he also uses his fire to shape and mold us and chasten us. Um, he, he, he uses some really, if you want to think about the metaphors God used to shape and mold us, that that we can associate with the pain. One is chastening. God chastens us. The Bible says he chastens because he loves us. Same way do your children. Um, we also know that he prunes us. Uh, I have some grapevines and not long ago I pruned them. I cut them back really hard. But you know what? We noticed some baby grapes on the other day. Uh, and fire is another way that God uses. Here in Malachi, I'm going to read you some verses beginning at verse 17 of chapter 2. It says, Ye have wearied the Lord with your words. Yet ye say, Wherein have we wearied him? When ye say, Every one that doeth evil is good in the sight of the Lord, and he delighteth in them, or where is the God of judgment? See, that verse, we could stay there a long time, but I believe it really hits home on our world. While we, we've been trying to say for so long that everything's okay, no matter how you live, you can live with somebody and not be married, that's okay. You can... Uh, Marry a man can marry a man, uh, a woman marry a woman, uh, makes no difference. And and we that that's not the only thing. We as Christians, I, I think sometimes we we think we're we're too good, or we uh, you know everything is wrong with everybody else but us. But we need to really search our hearts. God is saying though, we try to justify ourselves. That's what He's saying. And then he, and this is the consequence of it. And there's a burning coming. Listen. In the beginning of chapter 3, that was the last verse of chapter 2 of Malachi, it says, Behold, that is, look at, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord, whom ye seek, shall suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom ye delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like a fuller's soap. See what God says? God says this one that's coming. You remember John the Baptist came and prepared the way for Jesus, but the whole deal is about Jesus. This whole pandemic is about Jesus. It's not about the Republicans or the, uh, or the Democrats. It's about Jesus, and, and we're seeing that. Uh, and he's coming as a refiner's fire. Now, if he had said, I'm coming like an incinerator's fire, This fire in this forest was not really a forest fire. It was what's technically called in superculture practice as a forestry, a control burn. That is, it has controlled circumstances. I had to get a permit to do this burn. Uh, anything that happens in our world, this pandemic, had to have a permit from God to happen. But it's happened. So another thing that I noticed when I was doing this burn is the wind is a real, real big factor. Uh, you hear the wind blowing today. I, I pray that the Holy Spirit would blow on us. That's how the Holy Spirit needs to blow on us all the time because he is used in the Bible to compare to the wind. Now we can't control which way the wind blows. I wish I could cut the wind off while I'm doing this talk, uh, but I can't. When I was burning this, I had to be really, really careful. I had to make sure the wind was blowing in the proper direction and you, you light the fire uh, against the wind. You don't want it to be running with the wind. It'll get too hot, it hurt the trees. Well, God knows that. He is the master silviculturist, so to speak, among his people. And so, so he is a refiner. So what a refiner does is make something better. See, when gold is refined, it is heated really, really hot. And what that does is brings out the impurities. I believe that this pandemic is kind of like a control burn that God's doing in our heart. 
because that's taking some things away from us. Um, it's refining us, don't you think? It's making us understand that we can do without some things, but it's also making us realize that, you know, life is pretty doggone fragile. Uh, we might not be here too long, you know, and I think sometimes we base our whole aspiration and, 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 and vocation and viability of our life upon, well, I'm going to be here forever. We are not invincible. And one thing this pandemic has done is make us know we are very vulnerable to death. And, and yet, also are others, uh, even things, places, and people. We, we don't seem to be able to go like we did. So we've been separated from that, but it reminds us, you know, even our children, P and I both uh, wish we could be more with all of our children more and our grandchildren. Uh, but I tell you, this made me realize they're really not mine anyway. Uh, they're God's. Um, and and I, I wish I could be with them all the time, but I can't. And one day I'm gonna die, and they're gonna die, and, and we all are gonna leave this earth. So there's a separation. And, and you know what? There's probably situations you may be a business owner and you may have built that business and you realize all of a sudden that maybe with everything you were banking on is not going to work out. Uh, so what that does is, is kind of reprioritize our lives and we see what's really important. Uh, we're looking, looking at plan B. You know, you, you, you got to come up with plan B sometime. You got you got to play the hand you're dealt in life. You hear me? Now, you can do that because of God, and God has a refining purpose in your life. Uh, so, so we see that. And and but to understand what God is doing, it's like He's doing here. Is our plan B? It's God's plan A. See, <laughs> God's plan A. God, God knew all the time this pandemic was going to be here. He knew exactly what's going to happen. Uh, he knew exactly what to do, how it's going to be. He always writes the last chapter. And we need to bank on that and just, just take his mercy and grace. Because, you know, since we're here today, we're in his mercy and grace. Because I know what a sinner I am. I know that sinners, the wages of sin is death. So I know to me to be alive today, gosh, it's just the grace of God that I can be alive. And be with my family, my wife, and be out here in this beautiful place embrace this little place of land that was given to me to be a steward of and you know what that's all your life is whether it's your family your work you're to be a steward of it and, and if you can pass it on and hopefully you make it a better place and uh, so may the lord bless us but anyway he says he's a refiner's fire he's not an incinerating fire he's not a forest a wildfire he is a refining fire because what happens with that gold how it's made and silver it brings out the impurity so that you now it glistens and so our impurities are brought out by fire, okay? And he, and it says in verse 3, I'm still in Malachi chapter 3, and he shall set as a refiner and purifier of silver, and he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. That's what God does. You know why God's doing this? So that we can, we can give God something back in our lives that he uh, is worthy and he's worthy of everything, but but God is a God that that is very very serious about honesty, about confessing our sins, about how we live, not only in church, but every day of our lives. And so, may He continue to to be the God, that, and may we be reminded that He is a refining God. Now, in this in this land that that I did the burn on, I said I did it to improve it. And I wish you could have seen the under, I call it the understory. That's the brush that was growing out here before the fire. It was horrific. And what would happen, that would, if, if uh, the benefit of a control burn in, in secular terms in the forest is that it prevents the woods from being destroyed when a wildfire does come. Like if we have a drought this summer and all this brush that had been out here and somebody accidentally threw a match out or a lightning struck a tree and started a fire this whole place would go up in smoke just that bad but now what's happened the fuel has been released uh, reduced so now if I have that fire this summer I don't have to worry about it because why because the control burn has taken the, the, the fuel away the things that were not necessary they were things in this woods that were not necessary they did not benefit the trees. They actually hindered them. That's called the understore. There's a lot of things in your life that you don't really need. Uh, there's, that's really hindering, hindering your spiritual, your spiritual uh, growth, 
your fruit bearing. And God knows exactly what that is. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't even know in my own life, but, but God does. And I appreciate God caring for us enough that he refines us. And we need refining because we're all sinners. Every one of us, uh, David said he was conceived in iniquity. We are born sinners. Say, say, I know from my precious grandchildren and my own children, one of the first word, words they learned was mine. And it don't take them long to grow into the fact that, that you know, I'm going to be pretty doggone possessive with whatever I have. That's our nature, and we're still like that. We still have to fight with that. So, so what happens with this control burn, it, it takes out that understory. It, it separates us from things that we might have really thought were necessary. And what happened, does, God does a control burn on our heart. See, that's where the heart is where the issues of your life are, okay? It's not about your possessions, your, what you look like, your personality. It's your heart. And that's where God writes his word. That's why he writes his spirit. That's why he places his spirit in your heart. Because that's what's going to make you who you are as a believer. Not, not because if you're some denominational persuasion or you've been to the Israel or you've been to a, a conference or you've read the Bible through a hundred times. It doesn't make any difference. It might be good, all that. But what matters is your heart. Uh, do you love Jesus? Is God the most important one in your life? Do you understand that you can trust him even when things are not going the way you thought they should? Uh, that, that's what matters. And if you are convinced that Jesus Christ took your place on the cross, that he substituted himself for your sins, all of them. So when the devil comes around and try to accuse you of something you did 15, 20, 30 years ago, don't let him do it. Call him a liar. That's exactly what he is. And we got to be serious because, see, fire, again, is not to be fooled around with. God is serious about how we live. And, and, and I was as serious with this woods. When I hit that match and lit this with that drip torch, I was very, very serious. I made that commitment, but I was going to stay with it. And God will stay with the fires that he sends in our life. Isaiah 43 says, when you walk through the fire, he says, not if, now when you do it, he says, I'll be with you. God says, I'm going to be with you. So God is with us in this pandemic. The deal is, when we're trying to get out of it and we all want some relief, none of us want people to die and people to be sick and have to live like we do as little people in a cage and wear masks all the time and, and look at everybody like we're going to catch something from them. Uh, what we got to understand, though, is as we do this, we got to say, God, what can you do with me? How is this affecting me? And how is this burning away, refining me? That's how you need to apply it to yourself. Now, I agree, this world is so big, and I don't understand how God does all the universe, but I believe the scriptures when it says that he, that is God, knows whenever a little sparrow falls. He knows that every hair on your hair, he's got them numbered, God does. So, so in this pandemic, we might say, well, this is just the world sign, and it's surely shaking our world. But I want us all to look at this burning. What is this doing in my life? How is it refining me? Because I really believe it's like a controlled burn. God is doing it for a benefit. Yes, it hurts. It's uncomfortable. But God has a reason, reason for it. And the thing is, all the government and all the world, you know, is going around like, like they're doing it. But really, God, God's always used government, even in the Old Testament kings and even enemy nations, to refine his people. And he's doing that now. I mean, you take, and, and some of these politicians in the world, and certainly I'm not, and, and we need to pray for them all. I really believe that. I try to do that. I don't do that as I ought to. But I'm going to tell you, you get some of these things that you see on the news, some of these politicians are doing uh, regarding this pandemic. You would, you would think, to me, it's about as, as uh, uh, compared to an armadillo in a bathtub. I mean, you know, it makes that, about that much sense. It really does. And, and yet, uh, we know that God is using it and God is trusting. Just like a sunset every day, this afternoon, you watch that sunset God will send. I imagine that it's just for you. I know Penny and I sometimes, lately, every afternoon we try to ride around after supper and look at the sunset. It's always beautiful, but it's only there for a moment. But I want to see that it's just for she and I, just to be together for a few minutes. We can see another sunset. So beautiful. And it's such a precious moment. And that's how God does. So, so you think about this controller. Now, 
it's going to come back and there's going to be some beautiful grass out here. But these weeds are going to be gone. Uh, they're going to be gone forever. Now, in our hearts, when God does control burn, He can sever that off. Uh, we're going to be cleaner when we come out of this than we've ever been before. And I'm not talking about just from washing our hands. We're going to be washing our hearts. Because I know that you've been praying more than you've ever been prayed before. You've been reading more God's Word than you've ever read before. You've heard more preaching than you've ever heard before. What is spurred that? God has. That's why. Because, because that's what a control burn does. And, you know, see, a control burn, people will come see the fire. When I was doing this fire, there was people riding along this road. They were just looking at the smoke. So what in the world is that guy doing? I mean, is that a fool out there doing that? Lit this woods on fire. <laughs> you know, you think about God. God is burning our lives to refine us. And he, he knows exactly how to do it. There's a time unto it all. His Holy Spirit is moving us, blessing us, and we need to be so comfortable in that. I want to I share one other scripture just in conclusion uh, from Zechariah, the chapter before Malachi, and it's 13, chapter 13 of Zechariah, verse 9. Listen to this. It's God again, the master burner. I will bring the third part through the fire. He's talking about his people. And will refine them as silver is refined. And will try them as gold is tried. You know what? You remember what Job said? Wasn't it in Job 23 or so? He said uh, about God going through all that he went through. Hey, if we had to go what Job was doing, we would think this pandemic is just a pansy. I mean, compared to what Job went through. But you know what Job said? I think it was in Job 23.10. He said, uh, he knows the way that I take. And when he hath tried me, I will come forth as gold. You can put your name in that verse. Because God knows the way that you take. He knows everything you're doing. He knows what we're going through. But he's with us because he's the refiner. And he's doing a control burn on our lives. And, and so what's happening, he says, we will come through fear like gold. We are. But this verse is precious. Listen, I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. And here's the results of it. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say, it is my people, and they shall say, the Lord is my God. Now see, that's what God is doing this far. God says, my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and look to me and call upon me and turn from their wicked ways. He says, God, I'm gonna heal. And God says, this is my people. You are one of God's people. God has redeemed you by the blood of his precious son. And no virus, nothing else. Hey, I, I'll, I'll be willing to say this in front of God. I trust, humbly I would, in front of you, that nobody gets to heaven early or late. Or hell, for that matter. No virus is going to speed that up. Now, we need to use our common sense. Uh, I'm not going to get out and walk in, walk in front of a road, uh, an 18-wheeler, just to see if it's my time. Because when we die, it's going to be our time. Because if I leave this place and I drive home and a drunk driver runs over here and runs me over before I get home, don't say, well, you know, Brother Randy, a, a drunk driver killed Brother Randy. No, you tell you tell him that um, it was Brother Randy's time to go, Brother Randy's time to die. See, that's how God uses it. And yet we need to know life is so precious and we need to use all the precautions, pay attention to what the recommendations are, but realize that the, God is just doing a control burning. When the smoke settles, it's going to be clear. It's going to be right. We're going to say, the Lord is my God. And not only with our words, we're going to say it with our life. We're going to say it when we go to church. We're going to say it on Sundays at the family dinner table, in our vacations, in our workplace. Every day is going to be a day that we say, the Lord is my God. You watch it. You watch what God is doing with this control burn. May the Lord bless you and keep you very close to him. But always understand that Lord, the Lord is refining us, and he'll never, never give up on us, and he'll bless us. And always remember this, he will hurt us sometime. He will, but he'll never harm us. He'll never harm us. He loves us. Would you bow with me? Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessings that you give us. The ones especially we don't even know we're getting. 
thank you for what you do in the unseen parts of our lives. We thank you, Lord, for everything you've taken away from us and for all the control burns you've done in our heart that has refined us. We know we have a long way to go yet. We pray, oh Lord, that you'll continue to shape and mold us as the great potter that you are. All we want to do, Lord, is be a vessel that is worthy for the master's use. And you are that master. Help us all to say, the Lord is my God and really, really mean it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.